Gavin Hales is 19. One day he hopes to row for Britain. I started rowing at school. It's a lot of hard work and it's all year round, so you have some pretty miserable cold wintry evenings, but uh, it's definitely worth it for the summer, being able to get away from life, being out in the river in the evening. Just gives you a chance to clear your head. Two years ago, a sports injury threatened to stop Gavin rowing. His doctor sent him for treatment that included a radioactive injection. I originally hurt my back playing rugby. I've been having a bit of discomfort in my lower back and I've been to see my doctor, my GP. And she sent me to see Press Hughes at Hampstead Hospital. And Gavin, this is an X-ray of your back and this is the front view of your spine. Mm -hmm. Normally the spine is straight in this view, but this picture shows a curve on the front of the spine with an abnormality in, in this bone here. And I think this is the cause of your pain, an acute fracture in, in your spine. It was very concerning. It came as quite a shock. Um, nobody wants a bad back when they're 17 years old. So what we'd like to do is to see whether this stress fracture is active, in other words, that it's trying to heal, mm -hmm. or whether it's uh, not doing anything. So we'll arrange what's called a bone scan. Because radioactive material is injected directly into a patient, a bone scan can reveal details which would never show up on an ordinary X-ray. Seema Muhammad Targi will make up Gavin's injection. Large doses of radiation can damage body cells, so Seema has to protect herself and make sure the radioactive material stays inside her special laboratory. Because it has to be injected into a patient, of course, it has to be sterile. And Seema is working within a sterile cell, within a clean room. You can see the rubber gloves, and they're held in position by the pressure of the air, which forces all of the dirt out of the uh, clean environment. The injection is made from a radioactive chemical element called technetium. It will travel through Gavin's blood to his bones. The technetium comes from a generator stored safely in the clean room. This is the technetium generator that Seema's working with. I'll just take away the top. That's covered with lead shielding to keep the radiation away from the person operating the generator. What we've got inside is a column of molybdenum. This is continuously decaying into technetium to wash the technetium through the column, we use some sterile sodium chloride and the sodium chloride is sucked through the column to this sterile vial. The hospital can use these radioactive materials safely because they don't stay strongly radioactive for long. The technetium injection will only produce strong radiation for a few hours, just long enough to do the bone scan but the molybdenum generator which made it will last for about a week, long enough to make lots of injections. If I'd been holding this amount of molybdenum perhaps six months ago, it would have been extremely dangerous for me. However, in that six months, it's decayed away and I can safely hold it. On average, different radioactive elements take different times to decay. Looking at an individual atom, it's completely impossible to tell when it's going to pop. It could happen in the next few seconds. It might take a million years. There's absolutely no way of knowing. But when you look at a large number of atoms altogether, it's clear that on average, some radioactive materials decay much faster than others. The average time it takes half the atoms in a large sample to decay is called the half-life. It takes more than 24,000 years for half a sample of plutonium to decay. But the half-life of other elements is measured in minutes or seconds, so their radioactivity disappears much more quickly. For this reason, radioactive elements with long half-lives tend to be more dangerous than those with short half-lives. Gavin's injection is ready for collection. 
Technetium has a half-life of just six hours, so the clock has already started ticking down to the bone scan. I've just been down to the radio pharmacy to collect these doses. And in this little lead box, I have a syringe which has been pre-prepared for me with the dose which we need to give to Gavin. It has a protective shield around it in the carrying box. And I'm now going to put it into a syringe shield which has a little lead glass window so that the doctor can see that there is actually some fluid in the syringe. And this shield protects her against excessive radiation since she's giving injections day after day. Everything's ready. Daphne calls in a doctor to give the injection. Hello, Hello. come in Gavin. Hello, doctor. Hello. 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 Hi. How are you? Very well, thank you. Daphne has explained everything to you before, I believe. Yes, she yeah. has, yeah. Are you allergic to anything? No. Nope. Any history of asthma? No. Nope. Could you roll up the sleeve for me, please? Yeah, sure. I didn't notice anything. It's just like any other injection, you might feel slightly queasy having a needle stuck in you. But it didn't bother me, really. After two hours, the injection had worked its way around Gavin's body. It was time for the scan. Gavin, this is the camera that we're going to be doing the pictures on. Yep. I need you to lie down on the bed, feet that end, head up there, on your back. Okay. This is the camera that's going to be taking the pictures. We've got one at the top and we've got one at the bottom. And they're going to be moving around you, taking pictures at different angles all around your body so that we can do a reconstruction in three dimensions. Some of these scans were a little bit claustrophobic, um, particularly the one where they took uh, a scan of my whole body. It's quite difficult to lie completely still with my arms above my head, and that was, that was the main problem, um, making sure my arms didn't fall asleep. It took about three quarters of an hour in the end. The cameras are attached to a computer. It slowly builds up a picture as each gamma ray is detected. What we've got here are um, some images um, of Gavin's skeleton. The skeleton has absorbed the injection that we've given him, but the area we're interested in is this area just to the left-hand side where there's an extra absorption. This was the clue Gavin's consultant needed. What this um, bone scan is showing is that the bone is active and is doing its attempt to heal. Right. What exactly does this fracture mean in terms of my sport and whether or not I can train? Um... Well, I think <clears throat> what we should do is we'll put a brace on to let this fracture heal, like any other fracture. Right. But I think the idea would be that if we can relieve the pain and get the fracture to unite, we might get away without doing any form of surgery, which would be ideal. Gavin wore the brace for six weeks. The treatment worked, and he was soon back rowing again. In the end, it all turned out rather well. I'm now at New College, Oxford. Obviously, the big opportunity with Oxford rowing is the boat race, uh, which I'd quite like to have a go at. I'm not sure how things are going to go. So I'm going to see. From medicine to nuclear power, radioactivity can be a powerful tool for good if it's used with respect and responsibility. <laughs>